<clears throat> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Mrs. Smith coming to you previously recorded from my office. Notice the microphone today for our social skills lesson. We are learning about... That was my drum roll. Everyday speech. In your packets, your social skills lesson should look a little bit like this. Notice on the top it says everyday speech. We've got some questions and answers, and there's a couple pages involved, so we are going to talk about those things, okay? Um, I'm gonna set down my microphone now so that we can go over what's on this paper here together. Um, I hope all of you had an amazing spring break. Um, I know for us it was a little bit tricky because there's not a lot of places that we could go, um, but we did still try to do our best to have a good time. I hope you guys did too. Um, okay, let's get started. First question on here talks about Kyle. Uh, it says here, Kyle's friend was making jokes loudly in class, but he got yelled at. How do you think that makes Kyle feel? Down here at the bottom of your paper, you've got a bunch of different options to choose from. Uh, we've got nervous, frustrated, surprised, embarrassed, happy, scared, proud, worried, confused, and disappointed. Now the way that we're going to do this is we are going to discuss each of these different scenarios, how these kids feel, and why. Um, so let's read that top part again. Kyle's friend was making jokes loudly in class, but he got yelled at. Hmm. Now, if you're making jokes loudly in class, you're probably not trying to interrupt anyone, right? You're probably not trying to get in the way of your friends and your class learning or your teacher trying to educate you and give you instructions or work quietly on your assignments, you're probably just trying to be silly or funny or even make other people laugh or be happy, but sometimes that those actions are not always appropriate, right? There's a time and place for everything. So if you're in the middle of your class and you're making jokes very loudly and you get yelled at, Chances are your teacher probably didn't think it was very appropriate, right? I would probably feel pretty embarrassed because I, I didn't realize that maybe I was doing something wrong and then I got in trouble in front of everyone. That'd be embarrassing. The next one on here, Molly is a new student and it's her first day at her new school. How do you think Molly feels? Well, She's never really been to this school before. So it's a new place. She probably doesn't know very many people. So she's probably feeling a little nervous. Um, nervous is on here. She might even be feeling scared or worried. So if you picked any of those options, you're, you're probably right. She might have been feeling actually all of those things. Um, I bet as we move on through the page, we'll probably find some, some other options for a couple of these words so that we can narrow them down. So we'll move on to number three. Rachel studied hard for her biology test and got a good grade. Rachel feels happy or proud if I get good grades, or if you get good grades, I bet you that makes you feel happy and proud, right? Mike's friend Joe isn't talking to him. Mike doesn't know why. Mike feels, hmm, what do you think? Maybe worried? If my friend isn't talking to me, I feel worried that maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I hurt that person's feelings or that she's upset with me for something. So I think worried would be appropriate for that. Lucy wanted to be on student council, but did not get enough votes. Lucy feels, hmm, what do you think? Disappointed? 
Disappointed is a great word to describe how Lucy feels because she was had her hopes up. She was really hoping to get on student council, but since she didn't, she's definitely feeling very disappointed. Number six, Steve is making a speech in front of the school next week. Steve feels nervous. <gasps> That's where nervous belongs. Steve definitely feels nervous because when you've got to make a speech, lots of people are going to be watching you and that's a little bit intimidating. So nervous is an excellent word for that. Sam's boss said she's doing a great job at work. Sam feels happy. Oh, I know when Miss Anderson tells me I'm doing a good job, I feel really happy. Mm, Tim is going to take his driver's license test today. He feels... Hmm. I would say nervous is a very good answer for that one as well. Maybe um, worry too. That's a big test. You're about to go get your, your driver's license test. Yeah, nervous or worried. I think both of those things would be appropriate. Um, Alexis walks into a party that her friend threw for her. Alexis feels, well, if she didn't know about it, she probably felt super surprised. I think happy would be totally appropriate for that too because I bet it made her super happy. She probably feels super excited too, but excited isn't on here and I think it should be. What do you think? Hmm. Okay, so going over these things, we once again are evaluating the fact that things make us feel differently, right? Sometimes we have good feelings, sometimes we have bad feelings. It's very normal to feel things and to respond to things with emotions. Not all the time is it going to be good, but when it is, that's great. When it's not, we can always think about those feelings and those emotions and, and we can definitely talk about them. We can definitely remind ourselves so that it's okay and that we're not always going to be happy. Just like we're not always going to be sad. Normal to have various emotions throughout a day or throughout a week because things are constantly changing around us, kind of like right now. We've got to do online school. We've got to learn how to learn online and that's totally different or we're working through packets we don't get to see our friends every day like we did when we were going to school before or we're not with our teachers um, our parents are taking on new roles and, and trying to teach us how to to do our schoolwork instead of having your teachers there with you there's a lot of things going on right now as we speak that's going to cause a lot of emotions Maybe some of you are excited that you don't have to be at school every day. Maybe some of you are really enjoying spending more time at home, maybe getting more family time in. Either way, there's a lot of emotions going on right now as we speak, and they are all totally okay, good and bad. So moving on to the next page here. How would you feel? We need to match feelings to the situation that has occurred, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take your pencils or your pens or your markers or your crayons and you're going to draw a line from one of these boxes to one of these boxes to match the emotions, okay? First one on here, your friend makes fun of you in front of the lunch table. Hmm. I don't like it when people make fun of me. I'm, a, I'm willing to bet you guys don't like it when people make fun of you too. And in front of a lot of other people, hmm, they probably feel pretty embarrassing. So my guess would be embarrassed. What do you think? Do you think embarrassed too? The next one is your best friend made the soccer team, but you didn't. Hmm. Can you think of a time when maybe somebody that you were close to, a friend or a sibling, when they got something that you didn't, you kind of look at that person like, oh, I wish that I had what they had, right? That's called jealousy. Jealousy isn't a very good feeling, but I think that we all feel it from time to time. Um, you got a bad grade on a test. 
Mm. Yeah. Getting bad grades can sometimes make you feel like you didn't do a very good job at school, right? And that can make you feel really sad, especially if maybe you feel like you disappointed people like your teachers or your parents. Um, but the important thing to know is that a bad grade at school, yeah, maybe you feel sad or, or disappointed. Um, but you can usually make that up. And there's usually things that you can do. Maybe you missed an assignment, you forgot to turn it in, or you were absent for a day, so you missed you missed out on the lessons for that period and couldn't turn the assignment in. Uh, next one, you trip in front of the whole class. Oh, gosh. That'd be embarrassing. That'd be very embarrassing especially if anybody laughed at you or said or did something that wasn't very nice about it, huh? I would hope that if that happened, people would offer to help you up. But yeah, feeling embarrassed in that situation would be totally appropriate. Uh, your poster is chosen to be hung up at the school library. <gasps> so you made a poster and somebody liked it so much, they're gonna put it up in the library where they're gonna put it on display for everyone to see. Ah, oh, that would make me feel so proud. Would that make you feel proud? Proud of yourself for sure. Um, last page here, last page. It talks about empathy. Ooh, empathy is a very important emotion. You know how on the previous page we were talking about falling down in front of everyone? Well, that'd make you feel embarrassed. But if somebody made the right decision and they came to you and they offered to help you up, that's a sign of empathy. That's showing that that person took what you might have been experiencing and feeling embarrassed because you fell in front of other people and they used that to find a way to try to make you feel better. They felt for you. Um, having empathy means you understand how someone feels and you do something to show them, like helping them up if they fall down. That shows that we care about others' feelings and can be good friends. Why would it be important to be good friends or to show other people that you care about them? Well, what we talked about all through this packet here and on the other two pages, that it's totally normal to have feelings, good feelings and bad feelings. But when you're feeling bad about something, it helps a lot to feel like you're not alone. And the way that you feel like you're not alone in those bad feelings is by other people showing you that they care about you and having empathy and you showing other people that you care about them and having empathy for them. So we've got a little chart here. The instructions are you use a pencil and a paper clip to create a spinner with the circle below. Each time you land on a situation, tell how that person may feel and how you could show empathy. Now, if, if you don't have a paper clip, that's okay. Because right now we are just going to talk about these things. And then later on, after the lesson is over and you hang up, um, you can ask your parents to help you put a paper clip in here and then you can go ahead and continue playing with this if you want to. But if you don't, we're gonna talk about it right now, okay? So Rachel broke her arm. She had to go to the hospital for hours and now has to wear a cast for two months. Hmm. How do you think she feels? Hmm, maybe some disappointment, you know? She's got to wear a cast. That means she's not going to be able to play and run and jump and do things that she would normally do. Because when you got a cast, you have to be careful so that your body can heal, right? Um, she might feel some pain, you know, if she needs a cast because she broke her arm. That's, that's painful. I don't know if any of you have broken a bone before, but it hurts. It hurts a lot. So... She's probably gonna be uncomfortable and maybe, maybe a little bit sad too because not being able to run around and play with your friends and then having pain like that, oof, it can make you feel bad for sure. So what are some ways that you could show Rachel empathy? 
Try to help her feel better, to show her that you can be a good friend or to show her that you care. Mm -hmm. If I was to make a decision about this, I would guess maybe asking her what she would like to do. Since I know that her options are limited, I can always offer to play games with her or do things, spend time with her that would be appropriate, right? Um, also, just asking her if she's okay. Sometimes when somebody is going through a hard time, just asking a question and making sure that they're okay is enough to show them that they care because then they know you're thinking about them. All right, moving on to the next one. John is giving a speech in front of the entire school today. Oh, there were some scenarios in here that talked about giving speeches. It could be quite embarrassing, very nerve wracking. You get so nervous. Have any of you ever done a spelling bee or given a talk, whether it be at church or at school? Um, it's very nerve wracking, getting up and singing songs. Maybe you get nervous when you have your show what you knows at Excelsior. You know, you're standing up there on a stage in front of lots of people. That could be very intimidating. So what are some ways that we could show John some empathy? Maybe we could try building him up and telling him, you know, you're going to do great. Or asking him if he'd like to practice with you. Maybe he could, maybe he could give his speech to you as a friend, somebody that he knows he's comfortable with, and practice a little bit. Because practicing a speech like that or practicing singing your songs can oftentimes relieve a lot of those nervous emotions. Um, moving on to the last one, Alexia saved all of her babysitting money to buy a new phone. She just dropped it and the screen cracked. Oh, I've done that before, for sure. Do you know anyone that's done that before? Maybe your parents, maybe they've dropped their phone and cracked the screen. Um, where Alexia was saving all of her babysitting money, I bet that took quite some time because cell phones are very expensive. Hmm. She probably feels sad and maybe frustrated because that was a lot of work to save up all that money. I'm willing to bet you that if, if she knew that someone was caring about her feelings in that moment, she'd probably feel a little bit better. Maybe you could remind her that there's places that fix those things. Maybe you can... Um, I don't know, give her a hug. Sometimes just hugging someone in those situations can make them feel better. Because people like knowing that they're not alone. You know, they like knowing that they're not alone in those bad feelings, those sad feelings. So just being there for your friends in situations that might not be the greatest situations is oftentimes enough to help them feel a lot better. Now the last thing on here, how can showing empathy to others prove that you're a good friend? And how would you feel if someone showed empathy to you. I would love to hear your response to these questions. I would love to hear if there are any examples that you might have or situations where you shown someone some empathy and or, or they showed you some empathy. So comment below and let us know, okay? And in the meantime, stay safe and try really hard to enjoy yourself, okay? We miss you so much. Um, I know this lesson was a little long, but we did have a lot of things to go over, so I hope you were able to bear with me during that time frame. but please comment below, okay? Bye.